This video describes electromechanical delay. Now the definition of electromechanical delay would be the delay or the duration between the activation of the muscle and the time that force is actually produced on an external object. So for example, if I'm lifting up this 10 pound dumbbell, then what will occur is that I will activate my muscle. The muscle is attached to a tendon. This tendon is attached to a bone, in this case your ulna. When I activate the muscle, the muscle will start to contract and shorten. It will then take up the slack or the looseness of the tendon. Once the tendon is tight, then now I will have movement of the dumbbell. But the first part is a delay that can last anywhere from 20 milliseconds to less than 100 milliseconds when the muscle has to take up the slack of all the connective tissue within the muscle and the tendons in order to pull on that force. To give another example, if we use this skipping rope, the skipping rope is the tendon. I'm going to be the muscle. So if I'm activated as a muscle and I'm depolarized and now I'm contracting, then the muscle is pulling on this slack tendon. And this, nothing is happening to the bone until the muscle is pulled up and now that tendon is tight. So there's no more slack in the tendon. Once it's tight and I pull, then the arm will move. Now, in order to be an athlete in a power event, you need to move quickly. Research from our laboratory has shown that static stretching will help to impair subsequent performance, especially power and force performance. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons that would be is that stretching will give you a looser tendon. It will provide you with greater flexibility, which can be good for your health, but may not be that great for performance. When you think of a sprinter, like Usain Bolt, you want to think of a Ferrari. A Ferrari has tight suspension. It hugs the road. It feels the road. Usain Bolt hits the ground and has a very short contact time on the ground. So he needs to have that tight suspension. He needs to have only enough slackness in his tendons and connective tissue to get the range of motion that he needs. He doesn't need to have the flexibility of a gymnast. So if he has too much flexibility, when he hits the ground, it's going to take him a longer period of time to take up the slack of the tendon and then take off again. Usain Bolt would have a fairly tight tendon. So as soon as he contracts, there's almost an immediate transfer of that force to the bone so he can move very quickly. In terms of health, you probably want to have more flexibility. You want to be more like a Cadillac than a Ferrari. So that a Cadillac hits a pothole, you're not going to feel those bumps because the suspension will absorb those bumps. And that's the job of your tendons and connective tissue is to absorb the forces. And so in terms of health, you want better flexibility, you probably want a longer electromechanical delay than an elite athlete so that there's not as much torque or stress on your bones. So there's a difference between training for health and training for performance. And in terms of electromechanical delay, you want a short EMD or electromechanical delay if you're an elite athlete. If you're a person for health, then a slack slacker tendon with a longer electromechanical delay will help to decrease the stresses on your bone. So in summary, the electromechanical delay is the delay or duration or the time between the activation of the muscle and the force that's exerted on the bone. And that delay has a lot to do with the slackness of the connective tissue, especially the tendon. So once again, that time period will probably be fairly short in terms of a, an elite athlete like a sprinter, whereas for health, you probably want to be able to absorb some of the stresses in your life and therefore with better flexibility you would have a longer electrical mechanical delay before you tighten up that tendon and pull on the bone.